We are back with breaking news on the active manhunt for terrorists who stormed into a newspaper office this morning and killed at least 12 people in Paris. <laughs> That's just one of the angles that we got this morning. Those people terrified on the rooftop of that building as they look down the alley at the shooters who are out there, the masked men with guns on the street. Officials say 12 people were killed in this attack. It's a satirical newspaper. Charlie Hebdo is the name of it. It is a weekly. The newspaper had previously drawn condemnation from Muslims over its printing of cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Straight to the White House now. With me is the White House Press Secretary, Josh Ernest, and good morning to you, and thank you for coming back here, too. America's Good morning, newsroom. Bill. We wanted to talk about other things. Maybe we'll get to them. First of all, on France, what's the president saying about this, Josh? Well, Bill, uh, you know, this is an, an, an act of terror that we condemn in the strongest possible terms. Uh, right now, the thoughts and prayers of the president, the first lady, and everybody here at the White House are with uh, the families of those who were killed or injured in this attack. Uh, you know, right now is a moment where we stand shoulder to shoulder with our allies over in France. Uh, as they face down uh, you know, these, uh, this terrible act of violence. Just 30 and, minutes you know, ago, you called it a terrible act of violence, as you just mentioned there. Um, and now you call it terror. What changed in 30 mm -hmm. minutes, Josh? Well, you know, Bill, this is still something that we're looking into. I know that the, 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 the French president has called this an act of terror. Uh, it does seem to be that's uh, exactly what this is. And uh, again, this is a, a, an act of violence against innocent civilians. And this is a, a newspaper that has been targeted in the past. Uh, and while we're, st we're still waiting to see uh, who is actually responsible for this and what their motivation may have been, uh, you know, if it, if it is what it seems to be, this isn't just an attack on innocent civilians. This seems to be an attack on some uh, basic uh, universal human values, human rights, freedom of the press, freedom of expression, free speech. These are values that we hold dear in this country. These are values that uh, our allies over in France hold dear. Uh, and we have already had uh, top national security officials here at the White House uh, in touch with our counterparts over in France, and we are going to uh, be in regular touch with them in, in the days ahead uh, to work with them and uh, to offer any necessary assistance to help them conduct this investigation and to bring to justice uh, those who committed this terrible act. Yeah, as you rightly point out, the French president called us a terrorist attack without a doubt. Uh, last hour, you called them perpetrators. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out why the language changed. Did you get different information? Are you characterizing this in a different way, Josh? What is it? Well, uh, Bill, what we're... Uh, I, I, what we're seeing here is a, uh, an event that just occurred a couple of hours ago, uh, and we are still learning details about what exactly happened. Uh, but what is clear is that this is an act of violence, an act of terrorism, that we condemn in the strongest possible terms. And we are going to stand shoulder to shoulder with our allies in France. These are allies who have been stalwart in our international coalition that this president has built to take the fight to ISIL, to degrade and ultimately destroy them. And again, we're not exactly sure who's responsible for this. This is something that we're looking into. Uh, and we're going to work with the French to figure it out. But, and uh, clearly you know, they I had experience, confidence. Josh, and you can look at the video. And, and these, these were men who were out to kill and kill as many as they possibly could. Has President Obama spoken with the French president? Uh, I don't have any presidential level phone calls uh, to read out, but I'm confident that, um, uh, that, you know, that the president uh, speaks regularly with his uh, French counterpart. We've already had top national security officials in this administration. Uh, in frequent touch with their counterparts over in France. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be sure to let everybody know when the president uh, uh, has spoken with President uh, Hollande. Uh, Josh, I want to make an awkward turn here, okay? But here at home, you know, Congress has changed in the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But on day one at high noon yesterday, there were two veto threats issued from you and the president. At the same time, the president said he wants to figure out a way to work with the new Congress. How do you figure you're going to work on anything when the gavel is dropped on day one? with two veto threats out of the White House. Well, Bill, the, the two pieces of legislation that Republicans in Congress decided to move first are two pieces of legislation that the president has already indicated that he's strongly opposed to. So, I, you know, I, I recognize in your mind that that may raise questions about the president's willingness to work with Republicans. I think it also raises questions about the Republicans' willingness to work with the president. Uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, we're going to have our differences of opinions with Republicans and Republican leaders in Congress uh, about some priorities. What we can't do, however, is allow a difference of opinion over one or two issues become an obstacle to finding common ground on other issues where uh, we actually I, may I have I clearly understand that, but, but two veto threats in one hour. What do you expect to get in return for that? Well, what we expect, Bill, is we expect uh, Republicans to try to find common ground with the president uh, on some shared values. And whether that is 
uh, opening up uh, markets, overseas markets, to American businesses or trying to reform our tax code and make it more fair and simpler, uh, that there may be an opportunity for us to uh, try to cooperate on some issues and actually make progress for the American people. On Keystone, you know, the more than two-thirds of Americans polled support it, 68 percent from our polling four weeks ago. It's a bipartisan bill. For whom is the president speaking on this when he says he'll turn it down? Well, Bill, what the president says is that we should actually have, uh, that we already have in place a well-established process, one that predates this administration, for evaluating infrastructure projects that span international borders like the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, so I don't understand why Congress would weigh into, the, weigh into uh, a process that's already ongoing where we are able to separate politics from this equation and actually focus on the merits of the project. We can evaluate what impact it would have on the economy, what impact it would have on gas prices, what impact it would have on uh, carbon pollution. And, uh, and that's the way that we should determine whether or not this project should move indeed forward. Indeed, a debate that will continue. Josh, I appreciate your time today. Uh, just a statement from the president came out moments ago saying you're in touch with French officials in Paris, and we will follow that throughout the morning here. Josh, thanks. We'll speak again. Sounds good, Bill. Nice to speak, speak with you. Thank you, Martha.